Hey everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It is Friday, so happy Friday or happy whatever day of the week it is when you're watching this. I mean, it might be Friday. It's Friday now, as we've established, and it is also only a few hours to go until the start of Becca's 40-hour bookoplathon, which is a readathon that's hosted by Becca from Becca in the Books. I will leave a link to the announcement video down below if you wanted to find out more, but it's basically a readathon that's based on her monthly TBR game, Bookopoly. But what's really cool about this readathon is that it's completely live so there's live shows happening from midnight tonight until midnight on Sunday when the readathon ends. Full disclosure I have already started my first book for this readathon because the first two prompts were announced in the announcement video and they were to read a book with a dark cover and or to read a fantasy book so I am currently reading a fantasy book with a dark cover. So this is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is a fantasy romance with a dark cover. And I started this in the bath the other night, but I literally read two chapters because it is heavy and I was really scared that I was going to drop it which would not have been good so I put it down haven't picked it up since it's been like I think I started it Tuesday and as we have established it is now Friday I am really enjoying this so far or I'm enjoying it as much as I can be enjoying a book where I've literally read the first three chapters but for anyone who doesn't know this is about a girl called Poppy who is something called a maiden and she basically that means that she's not allowed to be touched she's not allowed to experience any kind of pleasure no one's even allowed to look at her so she wears like a veil and a hood and stuff and she's waiting for her ascension which not really sure what that is yet but in the very first chapter she convinces her guards to take her to this pub this bar and while she's there she meets a guy called Hawk who she recognises from like around the palace. I think she lives in a palace. She recognises him as one of the guards and then I know that he's going to be assigned as her personal bodyguard at some point because it's written on the back of the book. I feel like I'm doing a really bad job of explaining this but yeah so it's a romance between Poppy and Hawk, her bodyguard. But yeah like I said I am liking this so far. It's told from Poppy's perspective like her point of view in the first person and I like her she seems cool we'll see how this goes <laughs> I am also currently listening to Sadie by Courtney Summers which is an audiobook that a lot of people recommended to me I think I made a video at the start of the year where I asked for audiobook recommendations and this is one that was recommended more than once and so I saw it on script decided to give it a go and I'm really liking it so far. So thanks to everyone who recommended me this. Obviously, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use that for one of the bookoplathon prompts, but I have got a few other books that I want to try and get round to this weekend. So King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I really want to read this before Rule of Wolves comes out at the end of the month because I've pre-ordered it. And so I want to try and read them close together. I read the first five books in the Grishaverse last year and really, really enjoyed them. So I am excited for this. I've heard mixed reviews, but I'm hoping that I will still enjoy it. I'm also hoping to read A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. Never read anything by V. Schwab before, but I know that she's a really popular author and I want to try her book, see if I get along with her writing style. So this is another potential for this weekend. And then I've also got a few ebooks and audiobooks that I've been wanting to read for a while. So I'm going to play it by ear and just see how it goes. So it's a few hours later, as you can probably tell. My camera battery died while I was in the middle of filming, which is fantastic. Great start to the vlog. But I think what I was saying is that this is the first 48 hour bookoplathon that I'm taking part in. There was another 48 hour bookoplathon last summer, I think it was but it was before I even started my booktube channel so I didn't take part because I didn't know it was happening and then there was a month-long bookoplathon. I think it was around the time that I started my channel but again I didn't even hear about it until it was actually going on so really excited to be taking part in this one. I should say that I am planning to sleep this weekend. I know that some people stay awake for the full 48 hours but I cannot do that. My plan for tonight is that I'm going to watch the first live show as long as I can. I definitely want to take part in the first lot of reading sprints and then when I get tired I'll just go to sleep and try and wake up early. I do want to try and finish this by around lunchtime because the next dice roll drop what's it called? The next prompts will be announced at around midday and so I want to find out what they are and then 
pick my next book. I should have mentioned that the official Bookoplathon rules say that you can start books early and then use books that you're currently reading for the prompts. So I'm not cheating by starting this already. I have made a little bit more progress this evening. I'm like, what's that? I think I'm like 100 and 125 pages in and still really liking it. The writing style is very simple, so it's quite easy to pace through. The world in this is also really intriguing because Poppy lives in this kingdom where there's these guards that protect the people that are living there from these creatures that live outside of the city walls. Poppy also has this special ability that means she can sense when people are in pain. A few people have told me that this does take a while to properly kick in but I've heard that once I get past the halfway point I'm not going to want to put it down so I feel like it's the perfect book for a readathon. But yeah I don't have much more to say on this. I don't know whether I'm going to do any more updates tonight because I'm already tired and the readathon doesn't even start for another hour so yeah I'll probably see you in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. So I made it till about half one, two o'clock last night. I watched the first two sprints on the live show and then I needed to sleep. But I did wake up reasonably early this morning and I have made good progress actually on From Blood and Ash. I'm now over a third of the way through. I think I'm actually reaching the halfway point. I'm on page 255 so still really enjoying this so far. I don't know why I thought that I could finish this by lunchtime because it's now 11 o'clock and there's no way that I'm going to finish this in like an hour or two but I'm hoping that I can still get through a good chunk before the next live show. What I'm liking the most so far is Poppy as a character. I like that she's a bit of a rebel because she was born as the chosen one, this maiden that was selected by the gods to save her people. And she's starting to question everything and her life has never really been her own. And so to be honest, if I was in her position, I would probably be feeling a little bit rebellious. The plot has been moving quite slow so far because it's mostly been focusing on character development and well building but I like both of those things. I like character development and I like world building so I feel like it's setting the scene and I'm now reaching a point where the action is really gonna get going. We've also seen a little more of Poppy and Hawk's dynamic and how they have this banter and I'm really liking it so far. It's working for me. Really interested to see how that's gonna progress. The only thing I will say is that every time they mention the Ascension, the first thing that comes to mind is season three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Don't know if I'm the only one that associates Ascension with that. I rewatched the series recently, like last year, and so it's in my mind and I'm pretty sure that's not what's going to happen here. I mean, it might be. I don't I don't know if I've worked out what the Ascension is. I'm really hoping I haven't because, like I said, I'm not that far into it. I've still got quite a big chunk to go. But I have theories and I'm not going to say what they are just in case I'm right and it's a spoiler. But I, I, I think, I think, I think I know. <laughs> So the next two prompts have just been released and they are to read a book with POC rep and or to read a contemporary. So I don't know what to do because I think that Sadie, the audiobook that I'm currently listening to, would count as a contemporary because it's a contemporary thriller. But I've had a quick look through Scribd and there are a couple of other audiobooks that I think would count for both prompts that I've also been wanting to start. So I might have a wait. I might just decide later once I go for my walk. I'm going to read for the next hour anyway on the next few sprints and then go for my walk. And then I'll either carry on with Sadie or I might start You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson because I've been wanting to read that for a while. I've heard it's got really good reviews. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Falling out. 
Okay, so change of plan because I ended up finishing Sadie while I was cooking lunch. I completely forgot that I only had less than two hours left on the audiobook. So I'm going to use that for the contemporary prompt. And then I've made a poll on my Twitter to see what audiobook I should start next for POC rep. So the two that I'm trying to decide between are The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo, which is a really short novella. I think the audiobook is only about two hours. And then You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which I think I mentioned before. I also realised that I don't think I actually talked about what Sadie is even about, so I will do that now. So Sadie is a YA mystery thriller about a girl called Sadie whose younger sister was murdered and then not long after Sadie also went missing and so the book is told from two different perspectives. You follow Sadie as she goes on this quest for revenge but then you also get another perspective of this guy who is making a podcast about Sadie and he's trying to find her and is following in her footsteps. What's really great about the audiobook is that it's narrated by a full cast so you have different people that are voicing the different characters. I had to keep reminding myself that this is not real, it's definitely fiction but it felt so real. I felt like I was listening to a real podcast. If you're looking to get into audiobooks, then I definitely recommend it. Although I would say to check the trigger warnings beforehand, because some of the themes could be difficult for some people to listen to. I would say that because it's a young adult book, it's not too graphic but yeah like I said it's just something to bear in mind. So I wanted to do a quick update because I am now two-thirds of the way through from Blood and Ash and I am really enjoying this book so far. I'm getting to the parts now where oh how do I say this without spoilers shit is hitting the fan like stuff is kicking off. I am really interested to see what direction this book is going to go in because in the beginning it definitely felt like a slow burn especially in terms of the romance which to be fair I am fine with. I do prefer a slow burn romance rather than insta love. At the moment this is feeling like it might be a four stars. I don't know what it is that's not giving me that five star feeling. And um, To be fair though there's I've got 200 pages left so a lot can happen in that time and what I really want is some kind of shocking twist because I do feel like th this book so far has gone in a direction that I would expect it to. I feel like any little things that have happened, I know that sounds really cryptic, but a lot of the stuff that has happened so far has been what I would expect and so I need some surprises and I have heard from a lot of people that the ending of this book is going to make me want to immediately read the next book and so I have high hopes that stuff is going to happen and I'm excited. <laughs> I have also just checked the winner of the Twitter poll that I did earlier and the winner is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson so really excited to start that tonight. All I really know about the plot for this is that it's about a girl that wants to become prom queen because I think whoever is crowned prom queen at her school wins a cash prize or a scholarship something like that but then I think she ends up falling for the new girl at school who is also campaigning to become prom queen so I think my plan for this evening is I'm gonna carry on with From Blood and Ash and try and finish this tonight because I don't really want to carry it over to tomorrow so if I can finish this by about nine or ten-ish I don't know I feel like I'm really bad at guessing how long I've got left to read in books like I've got 200 pages so how long is that gonna take me like two or three hours, four hours? I don't know but once I finish this I will then move on to my audiobook and I'll probably listen to that while I'm doing some knitting or cross stitch or something like that until midnight when the next roll drops are going to be happening and so the next prompts will be revealed and then I'll pick my next physical book based on those prompts. I finished the book I really really enjoyed this and I don't, I don't know what to say. Ah, this is really hard. <laughs> So I think I'm going to give this four stars. I really, really enjoyed this. I loved the end, like the last 400 pages, the last 400 pages, the book's only 600 pages. <laughs> I think the reason that I'm not getting that five star feeling from this book is my fault because before I read this book, I saw a lot of reviews, like a lot of reviews on Instagram, Booktube, Goodreads, and I wouldn't say that those reviews were spoilery, but for example, like, I saw one review that included something that by itself wouldn't be a spoiler, 
But then I read another review that included something different that again by itself wouldn't be a spoiler but you put the two together and the pieces started fitting together quite quickly along with everything else that I learned about this book before I read it just little little bits of information it meant that as I was reading it it was really easy for me to predict what was going to happen next I did still really really enjoy this and I definitely recommend it if you like fantasy romance but I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more if I hadn't known or hadn't been able to predict what was going to happen. However, I have so far managed to avoid spoilers for the second book in the series. And then I think the third book comes out next month or the month after. It comes out soon, definitely. And so I do feel like this still has potential to become a new favourite series. I feel like I'm going to be recommending it to a lot of people. And so I'm not disappointed. I think that I'm just... Yeah, maybe I am disappointed. <laughs> but not disappointed in the book. I think I'm just disappointed in myself. I can't believe that I actually thought that I was going to finish this at like midday because that was stupid. But that didn't happen and it is now half 11. So in half an hour, there's going to be the next roll drops on Gavin's channel. So I'm going to stay up and watch that and then pick my next book. I might make a start on it or I might just listen to my audiobook because I've only listened to like the first 10 minutes while I was like doing bits earlier. So yeah, see how it goes. I'm still awake at the moment. I'm not feeling that tired but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I will. I, I might talk to you later. I might go to sleep. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> Book off the thumb board, roll number three is an eight. And that is the first book in a series. So the next two prompts have just been announced and one of them is actually pretty perfect because I mentioned at the start of this vlog that I really want to read A Darker Shade of Magic and one of the prompts was to read the first book in a series which this is the first book in a series so that works out pretty well. I'm not going to start this tonight because I'm already getting quite tired so I think I'm going to stay awake for a little bit longer because Gavin's doing his sprints and it's going to be really fun. It's like a slumber party type thing so I'm gonna listen to my audiobook for a bit and do my cross stitch which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that it's a cat <laughs> um, and yeah then I'll start a dark shade of magic in the morning so really excited <laughs> My brain really doesn't want to work this morning. I stayed up way too late last night or too early. What's the word? Um, I, th I think I went to sleep about three. I was watching uh, Gavin's live show with Lexi. So, so funny, like so funny. And I think I eventually went to sleep about half two, three o'clock. And then I woke up about half eight, I want to say. I don't know what is time, what is time anymore, but I did manage to read quite a bit of my book or I listened to my audio book because I couldn't see words last night, if that makes any sense. Um, but I am now about a third of the way through You Should See Me in a Crown because I listened to some last night and then I also went for a walk this morning to try and wake myself up. So yeah, I'm about a third of the way through, I think. I think I'm on page, I don't know what page, because audiobooks don't have pages. I think I'm on chapter 17, I want to say. And this is really cute. I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's very light-hearted, but it's also got a lot of layers. It's the kind of book that I could imagine working really well as a film. So this follows a girl called Liz who's accepted into her dream college, but she's not accepted for a scholarship and she can't afford to go otherwise. So she comes up with this plan to to campaign to become prom queen because in her town everyone is pretty much obsessed with prom and the prom king and queen both get full paid scholarships when they win and Liz has never really felt like she's fit in at high school but she knows that if she tells her grandparents that she didn't get the scholarship then they're going to want to sell their house to pay for her to go so she decides that this is the best alternative. I did also read the first few chapters of A Darker Shade of Magic which Abby from Abby of Pelinor sent me this for Christmas so 
Thank you, Abby, if you're watching this. I'm really excited that I'm finally reading it. Um, this is set in a world where you have these different parallel Londons. So you have Red London, which has magic. Then you have Grey London, which is our world. Then there's White London, where magic is slowly dying. And then there's Black London, or there was Black London, but Black London, the magic has gone and it's now died. And throughout this, you're following a character called Kel who can travel between these different Londons. There's only a few people that can travel throughout the different parallel worlds. And he's like a messenger or a, a smuggler. He takes messages back and forth between the different kings and queens. I am liking the writing style so far. I'm gonna read more of this this afternoon. I haven't heard much more on the plot outside of what I've said. And that's all that's really said on the back. So, interested to see where this story goes. Hello, so I am now about a third of the way through A Darker Shade of Magic and I'm really enjoying this so far. I really like the world building and I like learning about the different Londons. The only thing, it, it's a little bit weird with the pacing. The beginning felt very, very slow, but now that I'm getting to the halfway point, suddenly it's got really, really fast paced. There's action happening all over the place and I think that I'm following it but it's just thrown me a little bit. What I'm enjoying most about this book so far is the world building and learning about these different Londons. White London in particular is very interesting and there's something specific that's happening there that I... It, I wouldn't say that it's a trope but it's a specific thing that you sometimes get in fantasy and science fiction in particular and whenever it prop whenever it comes up in a book it makes me feel really really uneasy and an edge and not in a bad way I don't think I'm like I said I am enjoying this it's just it's making me feel a bit queasy. <laughs> the characters are also really interesting because you have Kel, who is this traveller that can move between the different Londons, but then you also have the perspective of a girl called Lila, who is a thief. So yeah, really enjoying this so far, hoping that I can finish it tonight, but I am also currently about halfway through You Should See Me in a Crown. I think I'm past the halfway point now, and I'm also really enjoying this. It's it's so adorable, and I, I don't tend to read a lot of YA contemporary, but I do like listening to YA contemporary as an audiobook because I feel like the language is a lot more conversational and so it's just a lot easier or I find it a lot easier to focus on. I am going to take a break for a little bit now because I'm chatting to some of my friends tonight at about five o'clock. We're going to do like a Zoom party, not really party, a Zoom chat, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to get some food and then I'm going to hopefully finish this but we'll see. <laughs> it's coming up for eight o'clock and the last live show is just about to start, but I am nearly finished with A Dark Shade of Magic. I've got about 100 pages left, so I should be able to finish it before midnight and class this as my third official finished book for the readathon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish my audiobook, You Should See Me in a Crown. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish that before midnight, but I will read the rest of it, however much I've got left. I'll finish it tomorrow morning, just while I'm doing stuff around the house and like I'll go for a walk in the morning as well. So I will be able to wrap up the vlog and let you know what I think. But yeah, A Dark Shade of Magic, still really enjoying this so far. It definitely feels like the first book in a series. I mean, it is the first book in a series, but I feel like there's a lot more to this world that we've not seen yet. And so I'm really excited to see how that opens up in the rest of this book and any future books. I definitely want to read the other books in this series. I'm going to make a prediction now. I think this is going to be a four stars. It's not giving me that five star feeling, but it's not quite low enough to be a three stars. But I don't know. It's between a three and a four stars probably like a 3.5 but I mean there's 100 pages left a lot can happen in 100 pages as I have learned in the last 100 pages of this so I'm rambling 
I'm enjoying this so far, excited to finish it. Okay, so it's about 20 past 10, so there's only, what, an hour and 40 minutes until the end of the readathon? But I have now finished A Dark Shade of Magic, so I'm really glad that I managed to get this in before midnight. I'm gonna give this four stars, I think. I really enjoyed it, it was very fast-paced. I think if you like fast-paced fantasy, then I would definitely recommend this. If I'd read this at any other time, I think I would have said that it was a little bit too fast, but because this is a readathon and I wanted to read it quite quickly, then it was pretty perfect. The one thing I will say is that I would have liked to have seen just a little more character development, but I do think that that could be something that is done more in the next books. Obviously, this is the first book that I've ever read by V. Schwab, and I would be interested in reading some more of her books because I did like her writing style. There's about an hour and a half left now until midnight, and I know I'm not gonna be able to finish my final book, which was You Should See Me in a Crown, but I'm gonna give it a good go. I've got about three and a half-ish hours left on the audiobook, so I'm gonna try and listen to as much as I can before midnight. I am listening to it on 1.5 speed, so I should be able to get through half of it, maybe, and then I will finish it in the morning and I'll do a final update for the vlog with my final thoughts, and hopefully I will be more awake. <laughs> Hey everyone, so I am here to wrap up the vlog because it's now Monday, so the readathon is over. I've actually edited this vlog up until this point, so I thought I would just quickly recap all of the books that I read this weekend and all of the prompts that I completed. The first book that I finished was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I really enjoyed this book. I think it's definitely my favourite that I read this weekend, and I'd really recommend it if you like fantasy romance. So I read this for the first two prompts, which were to read a book with a dark cover and and or to read a fantasy. The next book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers and I listened to the audiobook for this which I did start it before the readathon but I finished it during the readathon and again absolutely loved this. The audiobook was incredible and I definitely recommend it if you're looking to get into audiobooks. It's probably the best audiobook that I've ever listened to. So this fit prompt four which was to read a contemporary and also prompt seven which was to read a book set in the present day. The next book I read was A Darker Shade of Magic by V. E. Schwab and again really really enjoyed this. I should probably say that I enjoyed every single book that I read in this readathon. This was for prompt five which was to read the first book in a series which this is and I definitely want to continue the series because I really enjoyed this. The final book I read was You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson and technically I don't know if I can count this because I didn't finish it quite before midnight. I think I had about an hour and a half left on the audiobook which I finished this morning so I'm gonna recap it anyway because I read most of it during the readathon. I actually checked and this book fits several of the prompts because it's a uh, contemporary but it's also set in the present day but I'm counting it for prompt three which was to read a book with POC rep and also prompt eight which was to read a book outside your usual genre. So in total I read four books this weekend and actually I realised that if you count that last book I managed to complete seven of the prompts which I didn't actually realise until this morning. The only prompt that I didn't complete was the chance card which I don't mind. I mean, 7 out of 10 isn't bad. I'm pretty happy with that. I actually read a lot more than I was planning to this weekend, so in my mind, that's a complete success. But that does bring me to the end of the video, so thanks for watching if you've made it this far. If you took part in Bookoplathon this weekend, then let me know in the comments what books you read, what prompts you completed, and if you read any of the books that I did. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>